Are you a budding cannabis business owner? Do you currently own a license, are in the process of receiving one, and need help with taking your business to the next level? Tap Peak Relief Consultations. From licensing and staffing to seed to sale, Peak Relief uses their expertise in the industry to take your brand to the next level. Don't waste your valuable time spinning your wheels. Let Peak Relief Consultations ensure your can of dreams don't go up in smoke. On my show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying to work in some new material. Yeah, working on in new material shit, yeah, man. Yeah, you can't let them do that. Look, it's Cash Color Canvas, high level of conversation on livehiphopdilly.tv. I got my boy Nick Love in the building. Nick, I'm, I'm it's good, it good, sir. I'm in the building. That's big. Yo, it's, it's amazing, man. I've actually had a chance to know you for a little while now. So it's like. Yeah, it's been, it's been a few years. Yeah, it's been from the years. And I tell people, when I first saw your name, it was through Digiwax. And it was a time back when I used to do my thing, Last Word Online. And I would try to get guests. I right. would, what I would do was go on Digiwax and go see who's the press contact. Right. And Jeezy had just became a thing. And I remember, yo, I gotta get this boy Jeezy on my on, on Last Word Online. Right. Who's the press contact? Nick Love. No, Nick Love. That's right. <laughs> Nick That's right. Love. I was like, matter of fact, when I saw the name, I was like, what a rap ass name. Nick yeah. Love. Nobody, dog. nobody ever believes that's my name. I have to like really go through a whole thing, pull out my license, the whole shit. Yeah, you that's know, like your born name. name. That's my Nick real Love. Name. Nicholas Love. That's what's up, man. Yeah. <laughs> so for, for sure. those who don't know, state your name, tell us. What you do, man? Uh, I'm Nick Love, jack of all trades. Born and raised here in Atlanta. Yes. Um, many things to many people. Father, uh, mm -hmm. marketing guy, manager, party promoter, food blogger. Uh, shit, man. Some of everything. Yeah, man. I could, I could do Online that for a while. agitator too. For some. People. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Mr. Hot Take lately. <laughs> like I, I realized that, like especially when it comes to music. Yes, yeah. that's, that's me. Well, before, before we get into his hot take, I want to get into his music background so you can understand why this man is actually qualified to have some of these conversations. For sure. Um, let's talk about your influence. Let's first talk about how you, you, you met Jeezy. Like, how did the whole connection with you and Jeezy come, come to be? Um, that came about, I was interning for DTP at the time. And so, um, well, I was getting paid at this point. Mm -hmm. I was going back and forth to making. I'm yeah. um, doing promotions. I was doing Bobby V, Player Circle, stuff like that. And I was going back and forth to Macon, and I actually ended up running to my man, L.J. Malone, whose mother ran this spot called Habersham Music, mm -hmm. big record store down in Macon. So her son, L.J., um, you know, he's the one who kind of showed me around. Like, he's the one who took me to all the clubs, introduced me to all the DJs, and he introduced me to these guys from Young Guns Entertainment, which was Jeezy at the time. This was Jeezy mm -hmm. and Kink and the whole crew. They later became corporate thugs. But I'm at the tag office. I had a job. My mama got me a gig <laughs> at the tag office. This was my last real job. This is like 2002, and um, you know I'm sitting in the tag office. Kink comes in. I didn't see him. He went to a window to get tags for the trucks. Yeah. But they had changed the name CTE, and so one of the ladies I was working with me was like, "Yo, you should go holler at that guy." I said, "Why?" You know, because everybody at the job knew I didn't want to be there. <laughs> yeah. They knew I was only there because my mom got me the job, and they was like, "Yeah, you know, we're gonna do. We know you want to do music. That guy, he works for some music thing. You should probably go talk to him." So I look mm -hmm. out, and I'm like, "I know that guy." Got up from where I was, walked outside, hollered at him, and he's like, yo, man, we, we, moved, we moving up here to Atlanta. We got a crib up here in Alpharetta. I mean, if you want to work, you can come work. I was like, Psh, bet. Told them folks, hey, I'm out of here. <laughs> I quit now. Hey, hey, <laughs> I, I told them I quit. My mama was like, oh, you better give them folks two-week notice. Mm. So I had mm. to go back. <laughs> I had to go back to work for two weeks. weeks. <laughs> and then, and then I, hey, I was CTE from then on, man. That's what's up, man. And when they first connected, when you first actually met Jeezy and saw the energy he had and, and heard the music, did mm -hmm. you know immediately it was going to be a thing? Or was you ever, um, was you ever concerned? I knew it was, um, I knew it was, I, I knew I liked it. Mm -hmm. I knew they had money. Um, and at that time, I was kind of like, well, look, if, if, I, if the music is good and y'all can afford to pay me, and y'all can afford to actually promote this and really do it right, I think we got a shot. Mm. That was my biggest thing. I just wanted to be in the music business really, really bad. Like yeah. I said, you know, I wasn't getting paid at DTP. I was interning, which was fine. I was cool with that. That was just part of paying dues. Yeah, yeah. But at that time, by the time I was doing DTP, I had already done Dallas Austin and worked over here with his label. I had worked with DJ Toomp. I had done all these things. So I'm like, I just want to get some bread. So meeting them and making, I knew they had money because mm -hmm. I seen it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I already knew what that was. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that, that wasn't a shocker. Yeah. So it was just like, yo, if I like the music I'm in and I, and I love the music, I already, I knew it was going to be something. Did I know it was going to become what it became? Nah. No, I couldn't have predicted that. Jeez. No way. Jeez. No way. And this is around Trap or Die time. Like this you, is before Trap or Die. This, this, is, before? this is before Streets is watching. Okay. This is, you know, like I said, mind you, I came on the team. It was me, Coach K, Yousef, uh, who was Coach K's partner at the time, um, Kink, Asha, and Twin. That's it. But Twin, Coach K, they, you know, they're doing QC now. 
Yusuf is off running his own thing. Kink is back in the business as of this past weekend. I just saw him the other day. Really? Kinky B back yeah, in? Yeah, Kinky B is back in. So it's just like, you know, like we had a dream team, but it was a small team. It was like six yeah. of us. Yeah. And that's it. And, you know, I just, and I was the one who hired all the interns, all the street team guys. It was all my people. Now, Nick was the man. Oh, yeah. I, I, <laughs> when, I, when I hit the ground, I hit the ground running. Nick I was, was the it. man, man. I was ready to do it. I wasn't trying to go back to tag office. No, nah, I feel you, bro. But that wasn't an option. And you had a major run with Jeezy. Like, like you really was there, his first, like, real interaction with mainstream, yeah. m- mainstream world. Like, you was there for that. Streets is watching mm-hmm. Trapper Die, the first album, TM 101, the second album, The Inspiration, the USDA album, the group album mm-hmm. with Slick and, and, and Raw. Uh, I know I was still on Digi Wax yeah. trying to figure out a contact, and it was always Nick Love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we had a real run, man. We had a real movement, and, yeah. and, and, and it was an exciting time. It was different, you know what I'm saying? And, and to be on the, you know, from the ground floor was really, really dope. Because yeah. you know, one thing I tell people all the time is that you don't get credit for just working. Like, if you go work for Jay Z right now, right, you don't get credit for no. the Reasonable Doubt days. No, 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 you know no. What I'm you get credit for four, 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 kind of. Right. Well, you don't get credit for that. You <laughs> yeah. could just, you just kind of got to got a job. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But Lenny S gets the credit. You know, hip hop and G for get sure, the credit for, for sure. early Jay Z, and that's why they are where they are because they was there from the beginning. Yeah. So they've, uh, you know, amassed a lot of the credit and the, and the recognition from being part of the groundwork of getting Jay Z from here to, you know, from there to yeah. where he is now. Like, so you know, being at the front, you know, the forefront of the Jeezy movement at a time when Atlanta was like shifting. That was big because I was part of the shift. Like we helped yeah. create that that blueprint. Bro, you was part of the part where they go into Magic City and it's literally looking like a flood. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like like yeah. it's looking like a flood in there, man. Yeah, and you know that was a cool time. You know what I'm saying? It was different. It was aggressive. It was and it, it was everything that I was about. You know what I'm saying? It was about you know being super aggressive, being super local. Um, you know what I'm saying? And just and just claiming what was ours. You know what I'm saying? What's your relationship with Jeezy now? Uh, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, it ain't funny. I mean, you know, like he's. We, we, we're good. Like, we solid. You know, we don't have a bad relationship. It's one of those things where I, I disagree with, with Dog and how he moves in certain ways. Yeah. Um, I'm just, I'm real big on principle. You know what I'm saying? And, and honestly, in this music business, it ain't a lot of room for that. Mm. Like, you kind of do what you do. You get your money and you, you make your moves. And yeah. whoever gets hurt in the process or whoever kind of gets left in the process, it is what it is. And I get it. I understand growth and I understand kind of you outgrowing you know, your childhood friends or outgrowing situations. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm all for that. I've done it myself. Yeah. But, you know, there's certain things I'm kind of just like, eh, oh, I ain't, you know, that's just me. No, nah, I feel you. So, I feel like he brought you back on for another project. Well, he's right? brought me back on several times. That's yeah. why I say our relationship is, is, is good. I, I don't have a personal, you know, issue with dog. I have personal objections to some things he did, s- did with other people okay. that I'm like, I don't really like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I don't really have a... You know my issue is my issue. You know I, whatever, man. You know what I'm saying I never, I never missed a check. <laughs> I, I, I can, t- I can say that. You know, for, with 100 percent certainty, he, he's never not paid me. Mm. I've never had to run him down for no bread. It's, it's never been that. It's just always been like, yo, man. Like I started off as a fan, and of his, I ended up working and being a part of the movement, and I never stopped being a fan. But I was, I, I did have you know situations coming up in this music business where I was learned to separate business and personal yeah. you know what i'm saying like you start you, things happen and you realize like oh these are my people that i've met in the music business these mm-hmm. ain't my homeboys from oh, high school. i had that every day the, yeah, yeah these but, ain't, but it's a hard lesson like it hit me hard group. when i learned it it hit me hard yeah. like i was affected i know for a good year and a half you know so i was married at the time so it's like you know my wife was like yo you different mm-hmm. because there were you know we had situations where i was like yo like i'm hurt like i <laughs> like we like it's I mean, real. and as it's a man, I'm you, like, yeah. yo, like I'm not supposed to feel the way, but I'm like, I'm hurt. Like these situations and seeing people just be funny, um, it's just like, damn, like, oh, and then you like I said, when it hits you, you're like, oh yeah, this isn't my cousin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This isn't my home. I just call him my cousin. I call yeah, him is, my brother. This is this isn't my yeah, this, <laughs> yeah. Is, this isn't my brother. This yeah. is just bro. Mm-hmm, this mm-hmm. is cuz, this is whatever, but this ain't that. Yeah. And once you realize that and you absorb it and you take it in, like it nothing else ever bothers you again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of where I am now, like super jaded and super very like <laughs> nothing bothers me now. That's which is why I can make a list and not, and not, and not feel the way when somebody say something about it. I can be like, yeah, it's crazy. So, but you know, before we get to the list, you actually moved on from Jeezy pretty easy. Very coalition DJs happen. Eventually. Yeah, all the DJs I broke Jeezy through, I end up managing them. Yeah, yeah. You know so talk to us about coalition DJs oh. because I got involved. Well, I, I got very familiar with you right around the time the Washington, um, the Wall Street Washington Journal. Journals came through. Yeah, that was yeah. yeah, that was a great time for me too, man. Like I've had so many like super cool things happen, and you know, I would have never thought it would happen from dealing with the people I was dealing with. Me either. You know what I'm saying? Like who? No, who, no, not I would have. Ne- I, I mean, <laughs> listen. 
to end up in the Wall Street Journal for managing strip club DJ. Exactly. And on the front page of the business page. <laughs> exactly. And, and we wasn't getting indicted. Exactly. It was like the greatest thing in the world. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was cool as hell. But yeah. it was easy. Like, at, you know, at the time where I started managing the guys, it was a crew error. You know what I'm saying? There was the uh, Super, Super Friends was around, Legion of Doom. Um, the, the affiliates were still there. That's drama and canon order before they became Academy. So all the DJs had a crew. Um, the strip club DJs didn't really have one. And um, Big X, uh, X-Rated, Nando, and Funky decided, you know, like, yo, we, you know, we should put something together. That's dope. Um, and it was like, you know, we need somebody to be the point person. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'll do it temporarily. It was supposed to be a short-term gig, but, I mean, it just kind of worked. And I, once I became the kind of the, you know, the, the, the point person and people knew me from Jeezy and everything else, it just was like, yo, let's just go. So we hit the ground running and we, we didn't look back, man. We, we, had, we had so much success as a crew of DJs, man. We built a national name you know for me man and it's a blessing Facts. like you know we was kind of at the you know beginning of atlanta really being you know at a point we could stick our chest out and be like yeah we really we really do it look and i'll give y'all some props on this too the term strip club record i would have never heard that <laughs> minus coalition djs like people right. are really coming in there to promote a strip club record yeah that was a real that's i mean real. that's you know you, that's what you had to do to get a record going back in the, you know back, back then you yeah. know what i'm saying it was a time where you know the music business this is how we thrived, really. The music business went through this period, right? And, and me and Ty, show what Ty go. Shout out to Ty. Me and Ty had this conversation about growing up in the Gap, right? Mm -hmm. So we consider ourselves like these kids that's in the Gap. The people who came up before us um, were like that LaFace era of music business people, right? These people had jobs. They worked at LaFace. They, especially people who in Atlanta, right? So a lot of those people had LaFace jobs, record labels. They went on to get jobs at bigger, mm -hmm. you know, larger labels. The kids who came after us are... The, the Measies, the Keys, the TPs, all these guys, you know, these managers of 21 Savage and, mm. and some of these newer artists, they came up in the Spotify title, yeah. that era. Our, our generation, who was supposed to take over after the LaFace guys moved on, we got stuck in that area where the music business was fighting Napster, fighting iTunes, yes, yes. fighting nothing. So mind you, there are no albums dropping, nothing's happening. Like, we hit a, like a standstill. And the people who was in the LaFace era, they didn't leave. <laughs> they didn't like move on so we can move mm -mm, up. Mm -mm, they stayed. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And then that was the emergence of like World Star Hip Hop. Yeah. Emergence of live mixtapes. All these times where there's no albums dropping in. We had to figure that out. Because there was a lot. And then everything became free. You know what I'm saying? Yes, everything yes. became free. So at there's one point. no, there's no big job. No, for no, the, for my generation no. of people that was coming up, because it's like, yo, we're giving away stuff for free now. But the trickle down happened to me as well, because I'm a writer in that gap, you mm -hmm. know. And I remember distinctly my first job, my first writing gig with Double XL was 300 words. It was a dollar a word. That was a 300 dollar check. Right. Let me tell you how fast forward <laughs> six months, right. and that check became 75 cent a word. Mm -hmm. Then it became 50 cent a word. Yeah. Then it became let's negotiate. Right. <laughs> you know yeah, they then, want you to do it for the look. You're yeah. Like, Whoa, well, that, on, then you're doing for exposure and I'm like I'm five years in I don't need your exposure anymore. Yeah, yeah my, like I said magazine started shutting down mm -hmm. you know all kind of stuff that was prominent and stuff that I thought would never change or never go yeah, away yeah. started going away started record, going stores, away. record stores started going away magazines going away so now you know all of us we're trying to figure out like alright well what do we do like we're in the music business and we in our minds are like alright you know what well, one day if I just keep grinding I'll get a big job at Def Jam big job at you know whatever label and now the people that was ahead of me was like, shit, well, we can't go nowhere because we don't have nowhere to go. Yeah, so we ain't leaving. Yeah, so we ain't leaving. Y'all yeah, yeah. don't have nowhere to go, so yeah. this just this, 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 this stall out. Gatekeepers became gate closers. Yeah. Man. <laughs> like, it was like, a weird like, time, legit. man, but what it did, it made me very, very savvy and realized, like, yo, you better figure out yes. 50 things that you can exactly. do. And like, exactly. And that's why I said, you know, um, I consider myself a jack of all trades. Like, I can do it all. I throw a party. I I I'll figure out how to DJ. I, I'll manage people. I'll, I'll have a food vlog. I'll, I'll do it all. Like you, I, I'll never be broke. Yeah, fact, yeah, that ain't never be happening. Man. I have a, a real real fear of being homeless. And like, I think I'm that's really a real terrified. thing. You speak the people who came between that gap. That's a real thing amongst us because you will figure out five, six, seven ways yeah, to get money. You absolutely, know what I'm saying? You will. That don't involve me having to get a check from you. Absolutely. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just I I just refuse to be stuck on the whims of whatever's going yeah. on, whether it's a label, a person. Yeah. A situation, whatever, like, nah, I got 10 of those going. So if two or three of those burn out, I still got seven checks and we'll <laughs> figure it out. Like, nah, I'll be tired. Yeah. But I'll never be broke. That's what's up. <laughs> yeah, speaking of that, AtlantaBizClothing.com. Y'all gonna buy a yeah, shirt. So, <laughs> <laughs> we talk about streams. Yeah, man. Yeah. So let, let's get into the nitty gritty here, man. Because um, like I say, I was talking to my man Roscoe Dash a couple weeks ago. and I, to Roscoe. The last thing my man said before he left that show was, and I should have been higher on that list. And I, I said, that. what list are we talking about? And the, I was like, the, oh, man, Nick. Nick the Nick. infamous top 50 Atlanta rapper list. Yeah, the infamous 
top 50 list. So um, talk to us about how this list came about. Like, I mean, I know that uh, first it started off, I guess, with the New York list. And then before you know it, people yeah, just started you know, doing lists. Uh, I, I saw, the, I saw the, uh, the, the original, like the OG list, which was the one that had Button at uh, three, right? Yeah. So, you know, that was like the topic of discussion. <laughs> Joe like Button at three, okay. You know what I'm saying? But I respected the way Joe played it, though, because I listened to the Joe, Joe Button podcast. I fuck with Joe. But I respected how he played it. He was like, yo, like, he, you know, he, made, he had fun with it. Yeah. And he was like, yo, come on, let's be serious. Clearly, I'm not number three, mm-hmm. but don't play. I'm no slouch. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't, don't act like I'm whack. And um, I, I, I kind of loved that. I was just digging that. So one day, my homegirl, Brooke, she used to be a dancer at Magic. And, um, you know, we correspond on Twitter. We always kind of, you know, have banded back and forth. And so one day, um, we, you know, we just talking on Twitter. And I said, yo, did anybody ever do uh, an Atlanta list? And she was like, "Y'all don't have fifty rappers." <laughs> oh, whoa! And I was like, "And I was like, nah, that's whoa. crazy." I said, "We absolutely have fifty rappers." Yeah, clearly, that's an that's insane that. thing to say. Yeah. She's like, "No, Nick, I know you can probably come up with 20, 25. Yeah. She said, "But once you hit twenty six, mm. you gonna have problems." I was like, "I got you." So I sat down one day. I'm sitting at the house. I had my daughter with me, and I mean, like, maybe a 10, 15 minute brainstorm session. I came up with like 55, 56 names, right? Yeah. So I just took the top fifty of what I had. Now, fast forward a couple of days later, after the whole thing kind of shot out of here, because like I said, mind you, when I posted the list, I posted it on my personal Facebook and mm-hmm. my Twitter. That's now, how I remember it. Now, <laughs> it was being on Facebook. Honest, I, I have a fair amount of followers. So, I mean, on a certain level, I expected responses. I knew I would get somebody to reply, because I get someone to reply to pretty much everything I yeah. post. Um, but it took like my man Newface. Like Newface is cool with like B Dye and Elliot Wilson and all those guys. So he reposted it. They see it. My homeboy TP, who manages, well, he was managing Young Nudie. He managed the kid Jetson that do the tracks for uh, the baby. baby. You know what I'm saying? He posted. So now all the young folks are seeing. <laughs> so now they're reposting. They're reposting. And so now this thing that started off is just like. I'm thinking it's going to be me and Ty. Yeah. Mm-mm. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be me, Ty, Mm-mm. you, a couple people that I rock with, you know, my personal partners that'll see the list and they'll say, oh, man, so-and-so should be lower, yeah. higher, whatever. And we would, we would crack back and forth for an hour. Yeah, exactly. Amazing. Exactly. It, it, it explodes all over everywhere and then it just becomes this thing. But mind you, it became a thing in August. <laughs> this was the end of August when I posted this. It was like August mm-hmm. 21st. Mm-hmm. We still talking about it. <laughs> well, what, no, well, what happened was we talked about it for like two, three weeks, People and then upset. it went away. Yeah. Gucci saw the list, and he posted it uh, yesterday. He, repo- he, saw, he saw it for the first time, I guess. Yeah. And he's like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> so, but, but, when, but when Gucci Mane sees the list, now Shade Room picks it up, Academics picks it up. Mm. Uh, Carl Cherry, like all these people are like, now nah, I'm seeing think, piece, think pieces on a list I created in 15 minutes. And I'm like, yo, everybody's tripping. Yeah. And like, yeah. and it's a and it's a lot of it's a lot of bullshit around the list. And I, I do want to say this. Like, I, I feel like a lot of it is disingenuous. I feel like for everybody, like Tip, one, Tip, one of my favorite artists, he's number two on my list. Favorite rapper, probably one, one of my favorite rappers, period. Mm. But when I see artists say I don't care, I don't believe like that's not that's bullshit. Um, and not that Tip should be sitting around like, man, I'm number two on Nick yeah. Love's list. This is great. <laughs> but at the same time, rappers spend the bulk of their career telling us how good they are. And they the I'm best. I'm the best. Mm-hmm. I got the most money. I fuck the most hoes. I do this. Yep. And so then when somebody puts together a list and saying, all right, cool, this is who, who I think is the best, and you say, oh, man, fuck the list. Like, whoa, well, hold on. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. That's, that's, that ain't quite accurate. Yeah. Now, should you be losing sleep over it? No. But to say that I don't care where I'm ranked, I, I, I don't care, it's up to me, and I define who I am. No, it's not, because for years you rapped about, I'm the best, <laughs> I'm number one, I'm, I do this, I do that. Like, I even saw Walker today. You know, Walker posted something like, and he was like, yeah, man, you know, I, I don't want to be on no rap list. Let's talk about who got the most money, and let's talk about who do this. And I'm like, there's a list for that. And you still not on that <laughs> like, list. Not that be real. <laughs> like, there is a know, money list. You're not on that list. And the huh? funny thing about the money list is nobody ever says, man, fuck that list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nobody ever say the Forbes list and be like, oh, man, fuck that list. I don't care where I'm at. I'm, I'm number two. Shit, fuck man. that. Like, I ain't reading you that. Know, it don't be that. And like I said, I don't think nobody should be losing sleep about my personal opinion. But, I mean, come on, man. Like. We're all programmed as kids, you know what I'm saying? I remember being in elementary school, and we was like, we're going to make a list of who the cutest girls in class is. Everybody want to be on the list. You all, Everybody want to be on the top ten of anything. Okay, yeah. if it's the best dress list, if it's the who got the most money, who whatever, like you want to be on something. That's the appeal of list. Every blog website will tell you, whether it's complex, 
uh, Shade Room, whatever, they ever do a top five, top ten, everything, that's the thing that gets the most clicks. Yeah, of course. And drives the most Listicles traffic. Listicles do that. <laughs> yeah, they, that's what they do. That's yeah. what, I mean, and everybody's aware of that. So if you have any level of a platform, you put a list together, you're going to get a response. Yep. So, um, you know, like I said, man, but the list has been, you know, like I've had rappers reach out to me via DM. Um, call my phone. <laughs> Some people like, yo, bro, seen that list, man. Like, Saha called me yesterday. And he was like, bro, I got niggas calling me from prison talking about this list. Talking about number six on the list. I was going to ask you about the, the, the let's talk about the rankings itself. So, let's talk about on it. Nick Love's list of top 50 rappers, it goes, the top five are Andre 3000, T.I.P., CeeLo Green, For sure. Ludacris, yeah. Killer Mike. Yeah. I, okay, here's my issue. Okay. <laughs> here's my issue. I can't wait. And they both are killer, is Killer Mike and Andre 3000. I want to, wow. and this is not, yes, oh, well, I'm gonna let you finish. It's Andre 3000 and Killer Mike, because I feel like, how are we gauging this list? Okay, so let me start, let me say this. Okay. So everybody's clear. The list was originally a skills list. Okay. It wasn't about impact, it wasn't about who sold the most records, it wasn't about who was the biggest, it wasn't about who was the most popular. This was, if I sit right here and I start beating on the table like we used to do in the lunchroom, and everybody had a chance to spit, yeah. who's gonna give us that verse? Oh, man. That's how the list started. So, Andre, I don't think that's up for debate, but I was wrong because people wanted to debate me about it. I was stunned at that. I'm going to debate you about it. Yeah. Why? Well, I mean, because what's I the debate like on Andre 3000? The same thing with Killer Mike. Like, when we were talking yesterday about Mike versus Dro, like, we was having to, like, it was lightweight, but I was being for real. Okay. I don't feel like Killer Mike has really good verses. I don't know if you have enough work for me to be like, you're a top five artist. Like, I mean, you're a you good rapper, not, but it's well, like. Again, re remove artists from the equation. Lyricist. Oh, that, and that's why I was like, okay, lyricist. so we're going lyricist. So, okay, so lyricist. Lyricist. Again, top five? I got to think about that again. Andre is top five of everything, not just I Atlanta. It. I don't believe it. It's, I don't believe it. You, if you, where is he at on hell? I, this is what tip, I, the funny thing about Tip not giving a fuck about a list. Tip made a list today. <laughs> <laughs> tip made a list. Undubi undubitably. Or Tip's crew. Undubitably, he uh, made a list. Yeah, he made a list. Him and the Trap Museum crew, uh, Doug and all those guys, they made a list. And I think Andre might have been number six on their list. Andre ain't number. I don't even know how to put it because Andre to me is this guy. Like, you legitimately haven't given me enough to have to rank you. You just haven't. I don't, I don't know where we can go with I this. I mean, okay, but. Are you, are you a football fan? Yeah. You like Barry Sanders? Yeah. Andre Same Barry, thing. Andre Barry Sanders. I was going to say Andre Rising. I thought about it this morning. Andre Rising is, is he a Hall of Famer yet? No. Andre Rising is not going to be a Hall of Famer. I was going to say now, it, can, because he was <laughs> never, Andre 3000 he was is not never, Andre Rising. he was never at any point in the time the best wide receiver. Because I was like, no, not there's even a lot of people who go through the Hall of Fames, basketball and, and, and NFL, not at one point were you ever the best at your position at that time. You just no. piled, You just compiled a bunch of numbers. No, but I mean, I think universally, other rappers will tell you that Andre is. I mean, he's that he's. Guy. I don't. But I'm not saying he's not. I just say like I put him in the same category as Lauren Hill sometimes. To me, you are dope. But yeah, but I mean, Lauren Hill is better than. A, I mean, I think it's clear that Lauren Hill is better than a lot of people. Yeah, she is. But like, I guess that's not. But, but, but for Lauren me, Hill is but, like but for me definitely to say, better than most people. But for me to people. say you and your one album and these people who've been doing this for now. Five years consistently. How okay. do I just throw I'm, you I'm, up there? All right, I'm, I'm with you on that, but that's what. Okay, but that's also why I rank Jay at one. I think e, e, Jay G's hands down. Hands down. Jay actually. is number one to me. Yeah. Um, and, and like I said, and I'm a Pac fanatic. Um, I recognize that Nas is dope. I recognize that Biggie is dope. All that. So it's you know that. But to me, the reason I love Jay and the reason I think he's number one is because he kind of he lived, he outlived a lot of people. And, and outliving mm -hmm. a lot of people, he had to deal with the different eras mm -hmm. that came and went. Mm -hmm. And I always think about this. Like I, I had. I had this dream one time, and I still might do it. I want to do this play about like what would happen if like Pac and Big had lived, right? Because that's always the debate of like, well, if, you know, if Pac was here, Jay, if, if Big was here, you know, there people always say that shit. But I always think like, remember, Jay's been around since the Outcast era. Yep. Uh, Jay's been around since the Crunk era. He's seen the Snap era. Mm -hmm. He's watched Atlanta become Atlanta, mm -hmm. and Jay has been successful in all of those eras. Yeah. Like. I can't imagine what people would say if they seen Big and Future do a record together. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't imagine the the backlash of like Pac doing a record with uh uh what's my Blueface. I, you know I, what I'm saying? Like Jay I, has been around and done records with cats and 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 been in these eras and still been a top dog. And I, I don't know that Pac and Big, and Big would have done that. that. Not saying that they couldn't, but mm. we don't know. 
Mm-mm. So you got to give Jay some level of credit for just being around and being able to thrive. Look, I'll give you somebody else on this list who I thought should have been bigger. But mm-hmm. again, it goes back to the level of work you have mm-hmm. and how consistently you weren't. And that's Slick Puller. I think Slick Puller, honestly, if you're talking about just lyricism, Puller's that's amazing. a top 10 dude. Like, that's hands down the top 10 dude. Puller's amazing. And that's the homie. Um, yeah. Uh, but for this, but it's funny that you would rank him in top ten, given his he doesn't have as much. That's why I just said the same thing. You can't. It's hard to do that. But I would be like, damn. Because the same thing. I think you know, off camera, you were talking about Bo Hagen. Yeah. Bo Hagen has the same problem. Mm-hmm. A lot of these all. Matter of fact, I, I brought everybody some homework. I, I got a piece of paper that I want to show everybody. So I really is that what that is? L, right L is here. My people is here. I really want to because here's the thing that a lot of people you know I, I want to say like so I, like I said I came up with 56, 57 names right and cut it down to fifty. I cut seven names. Two days later, I sat down and really thought about like, damn, like, okay, because people hit me on Twitter like, oh man, you forgot so and so, you forgot so and so, Roscoe Dash. Dash. But like, mind you, there was a lot of names that I forgot. Mind you, like I said, it took me fifteen minutes to make this list. Yeah. When I gave it some real thought, there's a hundred. I got a hundred and fifty. I got a paper right here. Tell me how many names you think on this paper. Shit. It's 150 some odd names on this paper of Shit. rappers that you know, of rappers that you've heard of. Oh, Yola. Yeah. I mean, but again, no work, no but real again, work. But again, there's Yola. rappers that I didn't even think of that day, and I was like, damn, he should have made the list. Nah, not the. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's there's people like people was hitting me. I I was surprised. Like, how, Keisha was on your list at one point. No, no, she was on my list. Oh, she I'm was somebody she you was wrote a name that I was like, oh okay. shit. I, you know what I'm saying? But okay, I got a lot of people to hit me and say, yo, there ain't no women on the list. Uh-huh. I said, okay, cool. I don't, you know, what I'm saying like now, I'm gonna be honest with you. Well, I wouldn't say that. But for the people that's in the room, they say there wasn't no women on the list. Yeah. What female rappers do we have out of Atlanta, just so we can go ahead and just name them? Rashida. Rashida. Yeah. Left Eye. Yeah. Princess and Diamond. Yeah. Who else we got? Light Skin Keisha. Hold on, hold on. What's the Omaretta girl? I like the Omaretta girl. Who, She's dope. What's the girl keep fighting on Love and Hip Hop? Um, Akbar V. Akbar V. Akbar V. Okay. Akbar V. Uh, Omaretta. She from Atlanta? Oh, know. you remember Gloss the Boss? Why did that just pop yeah, in my head? Yeah, I forgot about Gloss. Gloss, Gloss the but, Boss. Okay, cool, but... China White. China White, China that was with me. All right, well, cool. she's doing Christian music now. Yeah, okay, but for the people that said there were no women on the list, of the women that we named, mm-hmm. are any of them in y'all's top 50? And and that's not disrespect to anybody. And of, of Atlanta, Rashida would be. Okay, but hold on, let yeah, me say I this too. Say Atlanta, because I, I, won't, I won't say his name, but I had, a, I had an artist reach out to me and was like, yo, nigga, you disrespecting me. Like He was really like talking crazy. And I was, bro. Yeah, he was, really, he was legitimately <laughs> mad at me. And, I, and to a certain degree, I understood. But at the same time, I was like this. I'm like, bro, look at this piece of paper and tell me, is it disrespect to be in the top 50? It's 100 plus names on here. Yeah. So to be, even if you're number 50, if you're 46 out of 200 people, it's not like a slight. You know what I'm saying? Like, now, I think everybody should assume they're number one or aspire to be number one. But like... I think the Russ one blew me away. I think I said that on Twitter too. Like, Russ. I think, okay, now... Are you how, how familiar are you with Russ? Because I'm a little bit more familiar with Russ than most people. I guess I, I guess I don't know. I'm kind of confused. I know most people remind they keep reminding me he was a producer, and I'm like I don't know. Like like, but but I mean for people who have aren't as familiar with dude, like dude is not whack. Mm, and it, and mm, it, no, and, not wise. No, and if we talk about money and numbers and sales. Russ is our soul, your favorite rapper. And you know what that last album he did with Scott Storch? Definitely. What was it, like number one or two? Yeah, Russ, Russ does numbers. So It's just who cares? Like, like if we're going to be 1,000, like, do people really care about Russ music like that in Atlanta, though? Have you been to a Russ show in Atlanta? Um, I've seen a Russ show in Atlanta. I'm, asking for, I'm not asking for a friend. I'm asking for me. I don't know. <laughs> like, does, I mean, do people I, really I, care I, about I, Russ music like that? I, some, somebody, somebody does. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> somebody does. I go back to the fact that I, I feel like... Um, Aria went to school with him. I'm like, maybe that group, like, if you remember him, because that's how I would definitely mm-hmm. roll with you. If I remember you from high school and I look up and I'm like, damn, dude, like, like I'm going everywhere you at. I'm supporting that every day. I can see his yeah. his his age group right. riding with that. The first time I met him, he showed up talking crazy at a door at a show in South by because I didn't know who he was. Right. Uh. And y'all know me. So yes. I was talking crazy right back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When he got on stage, people knew every word. Right. Of his songs. And this was like, so should Russ be hired? Let me stop. No, but I mean, but, no, but like, now I'm but, 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 but no, but seriously, one, we never gonna make a list that everybody's gonna ride with, no. right? There's not one combination of fifty people that everybody's gonna say that's the one. We're never gonna get there, right? No. But look at the list. Like I said, I had a lot of people hit me and was like, "Yo, Schoolie should be top ten. He's most one of the most influential artists in Atlanta, especially for the younger crowd." I respected that. 
I, I mean, don't. Sco- Schooly <laughs> is my dog. I he mean, wasn't influential to me. Yeah, yeah I was about and, to say. <laughs> the cats I run with, but I do recognize that when Rich Kids and, and, and that mm-hmm. crowd was popping, Schooly was the top dog of that. Like, he was the guy that everybody was trying to do what he does. You know what I'm saying? So I recognize that Schooly is dope. Mm. Money Man, he wasn't on my list, but a lot of people love Money Man. Is he from Atlanta too? I yeah, Money Man. From from, I didn't know he was from Atlanta. But yo, Money Man, um, who else? Shout out to God. Like I said, look, I, 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 want, I want everybody to see this paper because I really would like for the people that's here to see like the names on this list. Like it's real names. I, applaud that's that, like, Yo. I applaud that Scotty ATL and, um, and um, I applaud that Scotty made the list because I think mm-hmm. Scotty's really like a, a very underrated artist out here. Like lyrically. Yeah, right. I'm glad Bankroll made the list. But I'm, again, your top 10 is going to always confuse me because I'm like, you know, Sci High's definitely, again, we talking about lyrics though again. We talking about so, lyrics. Sci High. Ain't so many people are not going to outrap Sci No, Sci-Hi. not at all. Not at all. Not same thing with 2 Chain. I think 2 Chain's a little bit underrated when it comes to I the I think rap people part. hear the punchlines and the, and, and the kind of the, the, the more commercial records and they yeah. like, ah, oh, man, I don't 2 Chain. But I'm like, bro, you... You sleeping on on, on tit. You young LA, young LA threw me off. Too. Young young, <laughs> young, young LA, LA threw me off. I ain't gonna young lie, LA bro. is another one that had a lot of influence on the city. He had his that's his sound. Yeah. Was influential, but then a lot of people say, "Yo, if you're gonna put LA, you got to put J Money." Well, if you're gonna put LA, you're gonna put J Money. We go right back to me and Dewan Hart. Like all this is is Young Dro, Black Boy, White Boy. That's all Young Dro. Right. I mean, that's why Dro is one of my favorite rappers. You know what I'm saying? But- Dro can describe something like it's like um, him and Ghostface Killer. If they ever did a mixtape together, that'll be the most visual lyrical <laughs> album. You talking about Wally's dripping like marble cake, and you yeah. got raspberry diamonds from Tokyo happening. Yeah, man, like Bruh. this is amazing. I mean, like I, I, you know, and I, a lot of people, I saw a lot of people, especially people who wasn't from Atlanta, disrespected the shit out of Dro and was like, Dro, I can't believe y'all. Dro. But you know who got the most disrespect that I was just super offended by? Who? CeeLo. Because they, they forget CeeLo rap. You but that's so disrespectful rap. to somebody who came up in Atlanta like me and people who are like really from here Yeah. to hear people be like, CeeLo? CeeLo don't even rap. I was like... CeeLo a bully with that I was, rhyme. Who fell out like multiple times like, yo, CeeLo got some of the illest verses you'll ever hear in your life. Like, Actually. I'm a CeeLo fanatic. I think CeeLo's better than Dre, to me. Than better than Andre 3000? To me? Yes. But you know, it's not a popular opinion. But hey, man, I'll, I'll fight you about it. Yo, go back to uh, go, <laughs> go back to cell therapy right this second. That's probably the only verse I could t- I can name word for word right now. Like like just off the top of my head, like CeeLo's verse. So, CeeLo is amazing. But like I said, people think he's the guy from The Bro, Voice. Did they put that game? Or he's the guy from Nas Barkley. Yeah. Or he's yeah. the guy that sings uh, "Fuck You." You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. but they, they forget, forget rap. Soul Food, mm-hmm. CeeLo, Still Standing, CeeLo, mm-hmm. Fly Away, CeeLo. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like. People, cell therapy, yeah, CeeLo. Like, CeeLo is fucking amazing. It's, it's, not a, it's a reason he's still on these records that keep coming out today and people keep calling him for features and you know, and, so and to an, rap and to sing on these records. CeeLo is fucking amazing. That's another one, man. He didn't do it enough, long enough. I thought Who Cool that? Breeze, when Cool Breeze, when I first heard Cool Breeze on Watch the Hook, I was right. like, I remember saying, he's out of here. I was in college, John C. Smith. I heard that. I was like, he's, he's out of here. He's the best, hands down. Cool Breeze is amazing. I'm, 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 I'm a Dungeon Family fanatic. Cool like, I'm, family. It's hard to tell me anything bad about Witch Doctor, Cool Breeze, any of those guys. Witch Doctor, another Witch one. Witch Doctor is amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people. But you, again, some of these people, you have to be from here, though. Like, a lot of people don't know Hitman Sammy Sam. Like, there was a time when Hitman Sammy Sam was the biggest thing in Atlanta. I didn't even know he was but from Atlanta. you got to be from here to know that. I didn't know he there was from a, Atlanta. There was a time when Pastor Troy was the biggest thing in Atlanta. Like, you got to be here yeah. to know that. Like, yeah. Troy was yeah. Troy was Jeezy. Yeah. At one point, Troy was. It yeah, and Troy had three, four albums back to back of just like oh, vice versus like vice versus. What's the joint he had? All that stuff. The one, the joint he had with on Timbaland is still it's still a banger to me. That um, um, right. Uh, yeah, uh, with Jay, that that um um dun 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 dun. dun. Yo, yeah, past the Troy killed that. Oh, we cut it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know Troy got uh, you know Troy got Troy got hits. Yeah. Troy got the riding big that Tomp did. Like Troy got records and people forget because all they think of now is no more play in the belt mm-hmm. and the hell. You see him at all the, <laughs> and see him on the reality local shows. shows. <laughs> and he's like, hi, Troy with yeah. the belt. Hi, that's great. Yeah. He come out, do his one song or two songs, and he bounce. But you forget that Troy was Troy was the biggest thing in Atlanta Hands at down. one point. Like, Hands down. Not even close. It, not even close until Tip came. Hands down. I remember being high as hell on the West Side and hearing that record. Like, again, I used to dip down here from college. I heard that record on the radio. I think Luda was on the radio then. Like, mm-hmm. that might have been a Luda Luda era. Yeah. That's crazy, but man. But then you yeah. got to take inside these new kids, right? So you got the little keys and the little goddits and, you know, all these guys that's coming up now. Like, mm. some of us, like I said, my, I'm 39 years old, so my ear is going to be a little different for that. 
you know what I'm saying? But they're a kid. Like, I sat in the barbershop. After the list came out the first time, yes. I'm in the barbershop. Stack in the barbershop, club. we're all talking about it. And I asked the kid. He was like 17, 18 years old. He's going to cut. I said, yo, who your top five, you know, rappers in Atlanta? He said, hands down. He's like, young thug, harder than anybody you talking about. Word. Okay. And, and was like, and was ready to stand on that. And I, what I'm going to say? Like, yo, you 18. Like, what, yeah. 17? I mean, I, that's what I kind of expect you to say. Yeah. Now, Thug is not my number one, yeah. but to an 18 year old, or maybe even to somebody older, I mean, you know what I'm saying? But I expect a young kid, and I don't expect a young kid to say Andre or CeeLo or Killer Mike. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I expect you to say Young Thug, Future. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Because that's what you grew up on. Like, you, hell, so many people, you might even, you never heard of a Cool Breeze if you 18. I'm trying to think of some of these people even now. Like, some of these albums mm-hmm. are 25 years. Like, think about that. Like, For Cell real. Therapy. Soul food, all that stuff. These are these records came out in ninety. Like again, five, you got to be a, an Atlanta person records. to un- understand Ghetto Mafia. Like you got yeah, to, yeah. But you know, what I'm saying I'm from happened. Decatur, so Nino and Wicked and yeah. Ghetto Mafia is a thing. Jaren Benton, another one. Yeah, Jaren. Okay, now Jaren Benton wise, was one that I left off the list. Like said, wise, but a lot of people don't aren't familiar with Jaren. Jaren probably one of the best. Mm-hmm. Jaren up there with Sahai. Yeah, we yeah. talking about lyrics, rapping, rapping. but a lot of people don't even know Jaren. And if they know him, they don't know he's from here. Yeah. Because he doesn't, you know what I'm saying? He, he doesn't sound like Atlanta. He don't sound like all. Atlanta, man. Not you know all. what I'm saying? So the list is cool, man. I, 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 I love the, the debate of it. I love seeing the reactions. Like, I've screenshot a lot of stuff just because I think it's hilarious to me. You know what I'm saying? Just seeing the other lists that have sprang up, the people's opinions, the rappers' opinions. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, I love, I mean, I honestly, when I made the list, I assumed rappers would be like, ha, huh, that's crazy, man. You know, the fans, just, you know, it's up to the fans, whatever. I thought they would just kind of nonchalantly. You nah, know, this just kind of glance over it. This Atlanta. I didn't bro. know it would turn into a like people being personally. This Atlanta invested, but I mean, I get it, man. You know, hey, man. This is Atlanta. Man. This is the only place I ever, I've ever thought to myself, should I ask this artist this question before I ask this artist this question? Only place ever because Atlanta people take it very, very, very. Yeah, Atlanta small. You're running to everybody. You know, <laughs> very, that's the other thing. You can't. You say something serious. wild. It's like, yo, like you got to see him. Yeah, exactly. Very. You, but I'm out every night, so I'm just like. I, you know, I ain't said nothing wild. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get on the list. And was like, oh yeah, well these guys here are whack. Like I heard a lot of people like my partner. One of my partner, my closest partner, my boy Faye. He uh, he he got on me last night at Escobar. He's like, man, you had so and so. Yeah, I forgot. I can't tell you who he named, but he was like, yo, you had him higher than wife and Lucci, man. You really disrespected Lucci. And I was like, did we really? I'm like, yo, man, I didn't. That wasn't no disrespect. <laughs> really? Like, it, like again, none of this is disrespect. This yeah. is not me saying, okay, these guys are good and these guys are whack. This is just the names I came up with, but. Yeah. I'm like, yo, again, he's 47 out of 100 some odd names. Yo, like, be happy. I feel you on that. Be like, happy, yo, bro. I'm happy. I'm an Atlanta advocate. Like, everybody who knows me knows that I'm super about Atlanta. That's all I, that's the clothes I wear from the way I talk to who I kick it with, to how the, the events that I do, everything. That I'm, a, I'm super about Atlanta. So I'm just proud of the fact that we even have 100 plus rappers that people can say, yeah. I've heard of them. And argue about. You know what I'm saying? Like, every city can't say that. I'm trying to think like how you had the can young you, boy. I, I mean, no, just, I, Boston, I'm, sure, I'm sure this will start a fight. But like, <laughs> yeah, name me 50 no. Boston rappers. No, I'll start, it would go Guru, um, Acrobatic, Mr. Lift. Uh, I'm not putting Benzino on that list. I'm not putting Benzino on that list. No, I don't. Smoke Bolger. No, I don't. Smoke Bolger. No, I don't. Smoke Bolger. No, I don't. Smoke Smoke Bolger. Wow. Uh, I'm not putting Zeno on that know these list. Days. I've never heard of these people. Yeah, I'm not putting Zeno on that list. Um, Who, me 50, give me 50 Philly rappers. Oh, that, for, serious? Give me 50 Philly oh, rappers. Oh, I'm going... Probably top Philly. Because I'm going to tell you, I know state property. And, and again, I know, I'm like a few other people, and that's about it. I was going to say, 50? Yeah, 50? that's easy. That's an argument. That's a big old argument, you bro. Got, you got 50? Yeah, yeah. You, you, you talk about dude. I, I'm going Frank with the grippers. Okay, you talk okay. about niggas like that. All right, hold on. So, all right, so let's 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 go down there. I just want to hear y'all opinion. How many cities you think got 50 rappers that we can go name? Houston, Miami don't. Houston, Miami Houston got 50. I'm not sure Miami does. Miami does not. Houston got 50. Philly got 50. You, you say Philly got New York? I'm assuming has 50. With Detroit, with Detroit. Detroit got 50 rappers that y'all know. With Detroit, no way. With Detroit, I'm thinking. With Detroit. Y'all don't know. Y'all don't know 50 Detroit rappers. No. <laughs> no. You know 20 what? Really? That's amazing. I'm trying to think. Chicago? Chicago? 50 Chicago rappers? Uh, I'm not mentioning nothing about Chicago because that really could be a fight. <laughs> that really could be a fight. Don't Again, make I don't no want no Chicago smoke. list. Don't, don't make no <laughs> Chicago list. Yeah, I don't want no smoke, but I'm just saying, man, like. Are those is there fifty people that 
can name out like you can look at that list and say 45 of them are names that people recognize exactly yeah people from outside of Atlanta would know yeah. most of these names you know yeah. what I'm saying like like you know, people, that's why had, they were people had jokes mm -hmm. for Shawty Low and D4L yeah, that's and why they were franchise. Offended. Like you know, like Parlay didn't make the list, but a lot of Atlanta niggas like they really fuck with Parlay. You know what I'm saying on, on some street shit. Now I don't know how much of that is street shit, how much of that is music, but Parlay is a name that people rock with out here. So it's like, but if you ask somebody and I say, "Yo, Parlay from franchise," people from out of town be like, "Oh, franchise boys, I know, I know who that is." They know Fabo, they know Shawty Low, they know Travis Porter. I can't believe you know, they know like you know what I'm saying. Hey, bruh. Fabo was number 50. Fabo was 50. Bro. Um, I'm about to Fabo say. is a superstar. Fabo is a superstar. You know what I'm saying? So that's my thing. Like, Fable. so when I say that, so when you put this list out, like I say, ain't no disrespect to nobody, but dog, yeah. Fabo is a superstar. Yeah. yeah. Fabo can go do spaceships on Bankhead in Anywhere. any city. Yes. Right now and get the same reaction. And do that thing with his leg where he put his leg back on his arm. Yeah, he sure good. Yeah, he can go overseas and do that leg, that leg kick and be I, what? I'm geeked up and I'm I can't see. Up. Everybody know that. that. Hitting that hard snap. Boy, Fable might that have that one hard, of the most boy. iconic verses out of Atlanta. Yes. Like, period. Now, we start talking about that. That's a whole other conversation. Hey. You know what I'm saying? Walker's verse on uh, Oh, Let's Do It. Everybody knows that verse. Yeah. I fuck my money. Like, you throw I fuck my money up in the club yeah. right now. Yeah, right now. Everybody knows that record. You're right. Like, look, he rapping now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Yola. If you, we play some oh, of these Yola. Yola. We play Ain't Gonna oh. Let Up Right Now and, mm -hmm. and, and that went to going. Yeah. Dun, dun. They, yeah, yeah the so beat the beat drop. The beat alone. The beat alone. In any city, Yola is a thing. Like I said, so I'm just proud of my city for the fact that we even have records that have left 285. I don't like, want to keep. As much as we kind of kick shit about local rappers or all that, a lot of our records that might have, should have stayed inside of 285 yeah. didn't. Bubblegum, Rashida. You know what I'm saying? I was just looking our at. Our records left. I was looking at Bubblegum, Rashida. That should have stayed within this perimeter. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it should have. That was a real Atlanta record. And then Paul Blart put it on a soundtrack and it's everywhere. And you listen right. to Bubblegum for a whole year for no reason. Yeah. Rashida's, Rashida's gorgeous. I can't. I ain't say the word about her. Gonna man, chew up on I your ain't say gum. one negative word about Rashida. She's one, we're doing the prettiest Atlantans list. Uh, Rashida's top 10. Oh, man. Yo, hey, she, I ain't, no, I'm not saying she's not. Hey, I'm not saying she's not. Hey, Rashida, not saying Rashida's not. Not Rashida's saying Rashida's gorgeous. Not. Yeah. Yeah. Rashida and Carrie Hilson in my top five. Look, hey, look, look, friend, look. For, the, like, for the stress that yo. Rashida's been through, she don't look like it at all. Yo. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey. For the stress hey. she's been through. Hey, hey, Nick, hey, I ain't going to hold you up here too much longer, man. I do appreciate you coming through and interrupting hey, your time, party man. time anytime. to come anytime. explain this list for us. Hey, man. Anytime, man. Look, I, like I said, I gave y'all a hundred names. I would love to see everybody's top 50. We are. I'm going to work on this and tonight. It, we got, you know, Nick gave us homework. I gave y'all homework back because, I, I, like I said, ain't nobody ever going to put together a list that everybody's going to agree on, but I think it's it's fun. It's conversation. It's you know, it's barbershop talk, it's debates, and it's, it's you know what I'm saying, man? I watched Stephen A. Smith make $10 million a year doing this. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, like, if hey. If we do a top podcast list, I better be top hey, three. Hey, bro, hey, how about that? I better be top three. Talk that. Talk I'll, that. I'll be in your comments. Hey. <laughs> top two and not two, right? <laughs> nah, I you, hey, I hear you, man. I appreciate you coming through again, Anytime. man. Bless it, man. Shout out to y'all. And that's Cash Color Campus, our level of conversation. Yes, man. All right, we're going to do these pictures and drops. Founded in 2015. Peak Relief is the premier landing spot for your medical marijuana needs in Maryland. Not built by national consultants or businesses, but by friends with a dream to return home and create a better dispensary. Located at 2001 Chapman Ave in Rockville, Maryland, stop by Peak Relief and see what they have in store for you.